Hey, what's up YouTube? In part one, we made the entire outside of our car dealership. In part two, meaning this part, I will show you how to make the rest of the outside of your car dealership and the inside of your car dealership as well. To follow this video along, you will have already have to have made the actual building for the car dealership. Please do make sure that you already have this made. If you have to, check out the card system, the description below and the top of the comment section for part one of our build. Once you have done that, once you're ready, you can continue on to this part. And that's where we're going to start off right now. Let's get started. To begin, we are going to need all of these materials that you can now see on the screen right now. Please do make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. I do want to point out that we are going to be using way more than this, but that is an entire inventories full. I'll show you what materials we will be needing later when we get to those particular parts. Make sure you got them all, pause the video if you have to, and once you do have them, we can get building. Step one, we are going to work our way inside of our car dealership. And the first thing that I want to do now that I'm in here is I want to create the place where the workers would work behind desks and like help customers out with problems and all of that sort of fun stuff. So we have to make some desks and some chairs and some computers. And the way that we're going to do this is we are going to take this row of blue here just next to the entrance inside of it and we're going to place four rows, one, two, three, four of blue concrete extending across. We'll leave a gap of one, one, two, three, four gap of one, one, two, three, four. And you'll notice that that coincides with the windows. We want to flare the fourth blocks of every single one of those desks inwards. We want to give the worker a chair that is going to be a quartz stair or any stair behind the middle of the desk or kind of middle of the desk. You guys can see what I'm talking about. I'm going to give this particular chair arms. You don't have to use birch signs for this. You can use any signs. In addition to that, you can use any sort of method for chair augmentation that you like. So that could be trap doors or doors or, you know, there's a various amount of ways to make different kinds of chairs. I figured that the customer would also want a chair as well. I'm going to make it on the opposite side of the desk and I'm going to kind of like offset it a little bit. I'm also going to make the chair a little bit different in the fact that I'm not going to add any details to it and I think that that will just keep things separate a little bit. Um, oftentimes actually when you come to these places um, there's more than one chair so you could even add like a, another chair if you wanted to and then that way it actually even makes it harder to even augment them anyway because um, to uh, play some like signs or what have you you need uh, uh, more than a gap of one so uh, now that we've done that we are going to decorate the desks a little bit there's going to be a computer on each one of the desks we start off with a weighted pressure plate we place a birch trapdoor behind uh, the birch trapdoor is going to face like the way of the uh, of the other desks like this oh no this is going to be I, I should really change position okay i'm going to change position here we go so if i just come on the ground no hmm hang on <laughs> there's there's ways around this there we go perfect so now that if, if we flip all of those birch trap doors upwards and then we crouch and stick a painting on there, um, it just looks like a computer. I like the idea of having paperwork on the desk that can be achieved by placing item frames and literally paper or banner patterns actually look like documents that one would sign. You don't have to have them all in the same place, by the way, but I am just to, just to make it easy. Uh, I'm going to stick flower pots on the desks as well, just to make them a bit more personable. And I'm also going to stick some flowers. And I'll tell you what, I'll grab this whole set of next materials because we're actually sort of done. So flowers, lantern, white concrete, light grey glazed terracotta, terracotta itself, yellow concrete, quartz slab, dead bush, and some oak leaves. Those last two, we kind of need other stuff uh, for, to work with those. But um, basically, just inside all of these plant parts or flower parts, I would recommend that you place your very own materials. Um, your very own materials meaning your very own flowers. But again, just to save some inventory space, I'm just going to use the same ones. 
Now that we've done that, I want to add a separation in the wall. So th this is actually split into two. So we have like kind of like the customer area where everybody gets dealt with. There's going to be a coffee machine, a seating area. And then on this opposite side, there's going to be a showroom. This is actually laid out very, very similarly to a, a, a car dealership I went to recently. So uh, I, it's, it's actually made from like an actual dealership. And this, uh, this is kind of similar to how the setup was. So um, I'm going to grab the... We actually need... I'm going to get rid of the flowers for a second and we need blue concrete. Now, the blue concrete, as we move towards the back of the build, it's right next to this window. So we have the light gray for the window here. But then we want to sneak a blue concrete next to the window here. And we want to extend that blue concrete concrete across by 10. That's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You'll notice it lines up with the grey of the window over there. You can actually extend the uh, the blue concrete upwards like this. Um, you can do a few rows. I mean, you can, you can extend it all the way to the ceiling if you like, kind of like this to kind of just like fill in all the space. But we're actually going to be customizing the ceiling a little bit where we're going to use some white concrete for this. And I want to make sure that I've got everything that I need to that I need to know. So when it comes to the ceiling here, um, I want to add kind of like a little false ceiling in. So I want to add some white concrete kind of like going around, right? The entire top of this part of the build. So the white concrete is actually kind of going to skirt around the top of what we've got here. So that it would actually go where the blue concrete is here as well. So um, let's just add that in. So it'd kind of look a, a little something like this. So I just want to add it all the way around the inside and it's just going to sit above the light gray and stuff. I want to add rows of white concrete that coincide with the rows of white concrete that we have above us. So I kind of want to split the ceiling up a little bit, right? So um, where we have the windows, I kind of want the same se separation for just like the upper part. So this isn't looking too bad. This is looking pretty good. And uh, to clean this up, what we're basically going to do is we're going to add a decent amount of white concrete up here. And we want to make it so that if you look up the only thing that is visible is going to be like white concrete and the skylights. Okay, so this uh, this is going to take a little bit of finesse here, but um, this uh, this is what we're going to have to do. So this, and um, we might have to get rid of that row of light gray, or we may keep it. We'll have to see. But it means that we've got to kind of like we've just got to place some uh, white concrete here. We want to join the white concrete to the ceiling, and um, this is going to be a a completely subjective kind of like uh, uh, opinion on what you should do here. So um, I, I like this. I like the kind of like separations between all of the uh, between the ceiling and like all of the uh, different different windows. I actually quite like that. I think it looks kind of cool. So that's what we're going to have. And from the bottom, we just want to make sure that it's very clean looking. That's pretty much all we want to do. It just makes it look as though that some more thought has been put into the ceiling. Um, I don't know if we... Oh, we can't actually get rid of this light grey unless we move it one row forwards, which is not a horrible idea, to tell you guys the truth. That is not a horrible idea at all. We can indeed move that forwards if we want to. So I'll tell you what, I'll remove this row of light grey and I'll add a row of white in here instead. So the white is just going to go directly here. And then on the opposite side is going to go a, a layer of light gray, but we'll take care of that later. It just makes this look a lot smoother, a lot nicer. And it it makes the place feel a lot better. It, it, it does make the building feel quite a bit more modern for some weird reason. I don't, I don't know why it does, but it, it honestly does try it. So I want to add some lanterns um, hanging in between the desks of the workers. Um, you can even add some more paintings as well. Um, you, you're going to... I think that they actually clip into the lanterns. Uh, <laughs> they do. Okay, so I like the idea of just having some uh, just some one by one paintings, preferably not the same ones. Is that the same? Yeah. Preferably not the same ones that you've got on the screen and stuff. There is enough variety. There we go that we can actually have them, and it's just to spruce things up a bit. So you're preferably going to want to place the uh, the paintings first and then the lanterns next. You could go with the one by twos if you wanted to. 
So now that we've done that, and now we have kind of like this little separating wall in between two parts of the dealership, what we are going to do is we are going to place some seats and some potted plants and stuff. So from the corner of this wall, and by the way, yeah, that's looking fine actually. Um, from the corner, unle unless, what we could do as well, we could add another row of white concrete here just to make it a little bit more... Um, depthy, add a little bit more texture to the wall, like this, and then that would also hide the white of the skylight as well. So we almost moved on to the next part, but um, I'm just seeing a little change. Yeah, that looks a little bit better and it makes this wall pop out a little bit more. I like that. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do here is we are going to place a terracotta in front of the bottom left hand corner of this wall. We'll leave a gap of one and then place one, two, three yellow concretes. Gap of one, terracotta. We want to leave a gap of four, one, two, three, four, and we want to extend towards the back. So we want to place five yellow concrete, one, two, three, four, five, leaving that gap of four. We want to extend these yellow concretes inwards, the left and right side, just in like that. And what we can then do is we can grab our flower parts and on top of the terracottas we can add some flower parts with some dead bushes in, with some leaves. Um, it's actually much easier to place the leaves kind of like next to or you might have to um, crouch. Where are we? Yes? No? Do I have to place something next to you for, for you to work? We want to place some uh, just some leaves like this. And they'll kind of like extend up to the ceiling. There's some very fancy bushes and they, they just add a little bit more color to the build. Um, so the yellow concretes are basically uh, chairs. Um, this little free, uh, free row here, you can place uh, two quartz stairs on the ends like this and then you can place uh, one in the middle. And that just kind of looks like a seat. You don't even need the yellow concrete, by the way. It just makes it more colorful. Um, we're gonna do the same thing inside of this yellow concrete here. Um, this is it's the same thing, but it's got more of a frame. You can even add like, um, like little decorations, like flower parts, and you can add like lanterns around and stuff if you want to. Um, I, d I like the idea that somebody would be contemplating like signing something over here so you could even leave like an item frame and like a banner pattern in it if you wanted to. When it comes to this wall that we have here, we are going to want to add a coffee machine. That's right, a coffee machine. So the coffee machine is made out of red concrete, light grey concrete. It needs some light grey carpet, rails, lever, tripwire hooks, buttons, cocoa beans, and also flower pots, and in addition to that, we'll be using item frames too. I know, it, it takes a lot of stuff. Leaving a gap of one from this corner, we are going to have a row of one, two, three red concrete extend up from the floor. Take the bottom and place two light grey concretes extending left, and then a row of one, two, three red concretes from the ground. On the left side here, we're going to stick a rail on top of this light grey, and we'll stick a flower pot to the right. Above the rail, we're going to place a tripwire hook, and above the uh, uh, the cup, we will place a lever. So it just looks like operating uh, apparatus to uh, make the co uh, the coffee machine work. Place a couple of buttons on the right hand side, stick some light grey carpet on top of it, and it looks like a pretty decent coffee machine, honestly. Um, we need some item frames, so the item frames we're just going to stick here on the left and it's just going to, um, we're going to stick some cocoa beans in there and it, it just looks like a regular old sort of coffee machine. Um, what else do we want to do? Well, with the materials that we have, we need the white concrete, uh, the white carpet, the light grey carpet, light, uh, the light grey glazed terracotta, and we also need the white concrete. Um, what else do we need? That's that's pretty much it. We are coming to the end of what we can actually do with these materials, which is pretty exciting. Uh, so first of all, I'm just going to make a little rug inside of this little uh, like three by two sofa here. It's just it's just going to be an alternating white and grey rug like this. It's gonna is pretty much just going to be a three by three like so, and it just adds a little bit more texture, a little bit more uh, interest to the build. Um, I want to fill the middle of this wall in here. So this wall, I kind of just want to take the middle of this empty space here. And I just want to place some light grey glazed terracotta and I just think it looks uh, looks kind of good that way. 
And again, it's, it's just kind of like adhering to the color scheme of the build quite nicely, actually. And um, it, it just looks kind of cool. That's that's pretty much it. I mean, we could, we could even extend this rug if we wanted to. Uh, this is an experiment. I don't know if I'll like this. Um, we could extend it all the way here. And that might look better, might look worse. We'll have to see. There we go. And we could even chop it off here so that it doesn't uh, just sit directly in front. That looks a little bit better, actually, I think. Um, on the opposite side of this wall here, what, we're, what we are going to do, the plan, would be to completely fill this wall in here using some white concrete. That's what we want to do, we want to completely fill this wall in. Um, so it will just sit back to back with the with the blue, like this, and it will just, uh, just look exactly like that. Um, we don't really have to do anything else in terms of structure to this room, per se. We, do, we don't really have to do anything. Um, you can if you want though, you can, whoa, you can take this entire wall and you can kind of give it the same sort of um, thing that we did on the opposite side. So you can take perhaps like three rows of the middle or so of the wall and you can just turn it into light grey glazed terracotta if you like and that will just give the room a little bit more of an intrigue, a bit of an interest. Um, what we can also do is we can make a little platform in here too for one of the cars. So one of the cars is going to be on a plat platform, one of them isn't. Um, the race car, which is kind of, it's like a sporty little car. Um, if you start off in the back right hand corner of the build, and you move in diagonally and place a white concrete, and then you place one, two, three, four, five, five more white concretes in front of it, one, two, three, four, five, and then you add two rows of width to it, and then if you place kind of like a little ramp, some quartz slabs here, then that should look pretty good. And that actually, set that all of that sets us up very, very nicely, ladies and gentlemen, for the next part of this tutorial. So, so unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, most of those materials have kind of uh, used up their usefulness for us. We won't be able to use most of those for the next part of the build. So we are going to be needing all of these materials that I'm now showing you on the screen right now. There will be a couple of repeats for what we have used already, but for the majority, this is what we are going to need to finish things off and we're going to need all of those so please make sure that you got all of that pause the video if you have to and do make sure that you have enough of them as well okay so now we have all of those new materials we can continue on What's unfortunate about this is the only thing that we have left to do inside that doesn't involve cars is the fact that I just wanted to put a little bin in here <laughs> just a cauldron with an iron trap door on it next to the coffee machine. That's literally all we need those two things for, the iron trap door and the cauldron. Uh, I really wish that we could have fit into the last inventory. Now, now that that little bin's there, um, we can move outside. So outside is where a lot of work has to be done. I mean, we're, we're pretty blank here, aren't we? So the first thing that we're gonna do is I think we're gonna mark out where all of our smooth stone is going to go. And it, it's not too difficult to do. So, what I want you to do is I want you to work your way here um, on the left side of the build where we have these double doors or, or like triple windows rather. I want you to extend the light grey concretes here in the ground. I want you to dig 11 rows in front of them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And I want you to do that for both rows. So just dig another row of 11. And you can fill those in if you like with some smooth stone. And you can even join them together at the end like this. So what are you going to do with those two rows? Well, we're going to grab our white concrete and we're going to extend the left and right row forwards by another six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you can just do that again. And we're gonna place some white concrete in there, like this. And we're gonna join the white concrete together at the end and we're going to put some smooth stone in there. So we're just marking out where all of the smooth stone is going to go. In addition to that, we are going to take this row of white here that we have on the left, and we will want to dig four rows to the left of it. One, two, three, four. And you can stick gray concrete in there. You want to place a white concrete on the end, and then dig four more rows. One, two, three, four. And then stick a white concrete on the end. 
and then four more rows, one, two, three, four, and then you can just fill those two holes in with gray concrete. So you can see we have two car parking spaces directly next to a path. And what you can do is you can take this row of smooth stone that we have here and you can kind of like move it outwards. We want to move it outwards until it is even and level with the end of this white concrete here. And this is kind of where the end of the pathway is going to go for the car dealership. Um, that will actually make it. So the rule is for the sides. I want a row of one, two, three, four smooth stone that pops out of both sides of the car dealership. The left side, the right side, and even the back as well. So this fourth row of smooth stone will actually extend forward and it will be able to connect quite nicely. And going along with that, like I said, we want to have four entire rows of smooth stone that extend out from the furthest back point of the left, the right, and the back of the car dealership. So this is the furthest point backwards. One, two, three, four. There we go. So we have four rows of smooth stone. Those smooth stone rows can extend across and they can join together in kind of like it will look like a big giant sort of square shape like this. So like that. And then we can have it extend across, like so. And the smooth stone will extend towards the outside here. And then one, two, three, four. And it'll just look like this. And we also want to notice that it's extending out the side one, two, three, four rows, right? So that's perfect. It's adhering to the little rules that we've set out. And then we can extend this smooth stone forwards. And the difference here is we can extend it all the way and we can join it to the front here. So we want to have something which should look exactly like this so we've just got to kind of like add all of this in and then i can show you kind of like a top view i feel as though that i've made that a lot more complicated than it should be so basically once more the idea is that on the uh, on the left side the back side and on the right side we just want to have four rows of smooth stone that extend outwards from the furthest out point of each one of those sides and on the front well i showed you guys how uh, how far you want to extend it it's 11 rows um extending from the i guess the most inward point on uh, on the outside I, I guess from the most outward point that would technically be nine rows but you guys get the idea all of that will later on be filled in with smooth stone but here's the thing um, we also want to join these white concrete rows here towards the path. These are going to be car parking spaces. We're going to fill the majority of the front of the build up with car parking spaces. Um, in between these two rows of, uh, uh, of white concrete here, we are going to have smooth stone as well. That's actually going to be a pathway that you can walk up. And then we actually want to have a load more car parking spaces on the opposite side of this path. And it, it goes like this. It's one, two, three, four white concrete. One, two, three, four, 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 and then white concrete like this. And then the white concrete is going to be extended here towards the, towards the actual car dealership. And these are going to just be car parking spaces. That's all it is. If you, if you saw the start of the video, or maybe even like part one, um, all of these car parking spaces, most of them are filled up with cars and the entire back is filled up with cars too. So you can see all of the, uh, all of those are going to be spacers. Um, everything in front of this is actually going to be pretty much just like, um, not pavement, like road. You got, you guys get the idea. Um, I do want to mark out a couple of things on the... No, actually... Yeah, we'll mark out a couple of things on the front of the build. So on the front of the build, we have a couple of features. So um, if we take the front right hand corner of the building here and you leave a gap of two, one, two, and then you place a quartz slab and extend that slab towards you by one, two, three, four, and then extend that slab to the left by five, one, two, three, four, five, like this. And then you extend the quartz slabs inwards and join to the corner. And all we're going to do is place a little bit of a plant in here. So in the back corner, a 2x2 two two, uh, layer of uh, lime terracotta. And in the front right hand corner, a 2x2 two two layer of green terracotta. If we come over to the left side, we take the front right hand corner of this pillar here. And we do the same. We leave a gap of 2. And then 1, 2, 3, 4. Like this. 5. And then we extend to the left by the same. So one, two, three, four, five, like that as well. And then we just turn it into 
No, I thought for a second it was a square, but it's not. So, and then we're just going to place the same, like, two by twos of uh, lime and green terracotta in there. So, it's just like a nice little feature. It's, it's just like some greenery. You can place anything there if you like. It, it doesn't matter too much. So, on the left-hand side, we have a place where we are going to be putting a car. So, the positioning for the car is a little bit awkward. Um... Where we have the left row of light grey concrete here, I want you to take the bottom, move left by one, and then I want you to leave a gap of four, so a gap of one, two, three, four, on this fifth block here, quartz slab, like this. Uh, we're going to turn that into a quartz block. We will extend the quartz uh, block forwards. We'll place one, two, three sets of stairs. Quartz block on the opposite side. We want to then extend the quartz block itself to the left by six using slabs. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll turn that, uh, we'll place a block of quartz on the end. We can place three stairs on the opposite side and then another quartz block. And then we can just uh, extend like this. So we just want to create a little platform. Um, the platform you can place anything under. You can uh, fill it in with white concrete or perhaps even some uh, some grey or what have you. It, it doesn't really matter. We're going to be placing a car there though. And we're just going to use, because this is easy to forget about, we're going to be placing some blue concrete underneath the slabs. Because again, it's very, very easy to forget about if I don't do it now. So, so far, the front is actually, it's not looking good, but it is looking structured. So, we have our car parking spaces figured out, we have some plants, we have where a car is going to go, we have a support. And we, we know where all of our paths are going to go and all of that. So now that we've done that with the front, we are going to head towards the back of the building. And on the back of the building, we're going to keep this nice and simple. We're going to take the back right hand corner here of the uh, smooth stone. So the back right hand corner. We're going to leave a gap of four, or if you want, one, two, three, four, you can place a row of four grey concrete in the ground. And then we're going to have a row of one, two, three, four, five, six white concrete directly behind the grey concrete like this. And this is going to be separation between all of the car parking spaces. And they're going to be made the same way as we did on the front. So if you like, you can even come to this opposite corner here. One, two, three, four. And you can place your four rows of grey concrete and then one, two, three, four, five, six rows of uh, white concrete like this and then all we have to do is join those two rows of white concrete together and it's, it's so easy to do one two three four rows of, of gray concrete and then a white on the end and again if you just adhere to that so one two three four five would be white concrete so let's do it in fives one two three four five white concrete 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 one two three four and then we've already got the row there so you can see we've actually got enough room for a lot of car parking spaces on the back and all of these rows of white concrete will extend and join and connect to this back wall so i don't, I don't feel as though i have to show you that i figure i figure that you guys get that so, on the back, we also have, it's just a minor little bit of detail. So, mo going around the car dealership is, for the most part, a hedge that's going to be made out of oak leaves. We just want to make a little feature back here. It's going to be made out of smooth stone slabs, trees, bone meal, and uh, we'll need some flowers. So, instead of having a car parking space on the end here, which would fit perfectly, by the way, um, if we imagine that the hedge is going around the back of the build, just slotted into this corner is going to be, we're going to place some, there we go, we're going to place some uh, smooth stone slabs, we're going to stick a tree in the middle of this, uh, and around the bottom of the tree is going to be flowers, so it can actually be any flower, I really didn't want the tree to be that tiny, it's almost as bad as the tree being massively tall, and around the base of the tree we're just going to stick some flowers, that's it. And again, it's just to add a little bit of colour to the build, and we'll be doing that on both sides, so um, just instead of, or if you want, just have another car parking space, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter, it's more, it's more so up to you. It's a personal little detail, so... 
Uh, maybe I was stood over the tree. That might have been the problem. There we go. That's a normal, normalish sized tree. That's a much better sized tree. Um, that's much better. Um, we can place some tulips in here. I, I don't know. I'm not using tulips for any particular reason. It's just, I, they're just red and I like red, I guess. I guess there is a reason. And they're kind of like a falling out of my hand there, aren't they? Anyway, so that's what the back's going to look like. And then if, if you could imagine, um, the leaves are going to extend across the back here. This is the last little thing that we kind of like have to point out. The leaves will extend across the back. The leaves will come all the way forwards. And the only place that we don't want to have the leaves is we are going to have an entrance. So where we have this path here is also where the entrance is going to be. So you can even make it a little bit wider if you want. That's how people are going to get in and out of the car dealership. So um, imagine that those leaves extend backwards. So that's actually going to be the actual road entrance to the dealership here. If, uh, if you guys can imagine, you can make it in a different place. Uh, it's, it's just going to be right here. And then you would have either like pavement here or or you would have some rows of uh, of road. So all of that is uh, has to be filled in. Um, that is going to be a very long process, unfortunately. So uh, all of this, you guys can kind of see how it's going to map out, right? Um, we're going to dig inside of all of the smooth stone, replace it with smooth stone. We'll dig out all of the grass, replace it with grass. And I might also dig underneath the hedge and I might use some... I will probably opt to use the green terracotta underneath it. Once all of that has been done, ladies and gentlemen, all of the, the grey pretty much and the smooth stone and the green terracotta has been added, the last thing that we will be doing is making three separate cars that you can use throughout the entire build. So that's what we've got to do. Let, let, let's get it done. I'm certainly not doing it on recording. It will take far too long. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what your car dealership should look like once you have filled in all of those areas. So we have all of the car parking spaces, we have all of the pathway around the actual car dealership done as well, we have all of the nice trees and greenery, we have the platforms, and we also have the little bushes outside the front, which puts us in a great position to simply just fill in the rest of the car dealership with, well, uh cars. So there are three different cars that you can make that I have designed for you. I'm going to show you how to make all three of them in this video. I'll show you what materials you need and it, it will be up to you to repeat those cars as you see fit and completely fill in the dealership. So for the first car that I'm going to show you, you will need all of these materials that I am now showing you on the screen right now. So please do make sure that you have access to all these materials and enough of them. And once you have them, we can begin. This is going to be, by the way, the more sporty looking of the cars. I guess you could call it a sports car. Okay, so now that we have all of those materials, we can get started. And by the way, this car can be made with any selection of blocks that has a stairs and slab combination. So you can customize this as you see fit. Uh, we're going to start off with the front of the car and we're going to place a quartz stairs. Next to the quartz stairs, a red never brick slab. On the opposite side, a quartz stairs. We'll place black concretes behind each of the stairs, and we will place upside down quartz stairs behind the black concretes. You'll leave a gap of one and place more black concrete. You'll then place upside down quartz stairs joining to the first pair. And then we will simply place upside down quartz stairs across the back of the build like this. We are going to place a solid red never brick behind the slab and we will fill the middle of the car in using slabs, quartz slabs to be specific. Uh, on top of the back wheels we will place quartz stairs extending upwards and we'll join them together in the middle. We'll place two black stained glass panes extending from both ends of the quartz stairs and we'll join them in the middle at the front. We want to have a strip of red never brick slabs that basically it sits on front of, on the front of the middle uh, glass pane here and it extends one row backwards with quartz slabs either side of the red never brick. We are going to place uh, some stone buttons on the sides of the wheels for the car like this. 
boom, just like so. And we're also going to give the car headlights. So that's going to be item frames with blocks of iron on the front two corners of the car. And inversely, we are going to place item frames hanging off the back two corners. On top of those same corners, we want to place end rods. On top of the end rods, we want to place quartz slabs. And in between the quartz slabs, we want to place red never brick slabs or a red never brick slab. You, again, you get, get the idea. So now that we've placed that, we can, I think, get rid of most of this stuff. I hope that that's not a mistake. And we're going to grab red concrete and weighted pressure plates. Uh, we're going to place red concrete inside the item frames and weighted pressure plates simply on top of the wheels. You can also use carpet, but I think that it makes it look a little bit better, I think, with the weighted pressure plate. And that, ladies and gentlemen, I think, let's uh, let's take a, a decent view of this. I think that that's a pretty decently sporty looking car. And it's a very easy car to make as well. I think that probably took us, what, about two minutes? And uh, we're going to have to make a load more of those or different kinds. or You guys get the idea. So that is car number one. So I'm going to get rid of all this stuff and I'm going to show you how to make car number two. So here is everything that we will need to make car number two, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be much more of an SUV, a 4x4, you might call it in certain places. It's just a larger car. Uh, please make sure that you've got all those materials, make sure that you've got enough of them as well. And once you do have all of that stuff, ladies and gentlemen, we can get this thing started. So now that we have all of our stuff, we can get the SUV started. And I will point out my favorite combination is to make it orange only because we can use the accompanying that's a hard word to say I, I messed that up a few times accompanying acacia trap doors and acacia pressure plates to make it look a little bit better but you can make it in any color that you like so this car is actually going to go on the floor um, you can make a platform if you want but i think it might actually uh, interfere with the roof but i mean that's a that's not my problem <laughs> it's up to you you can try it though um so from the front left hand corner of this platform here we're going to leave a gap of four. One, two, three, four, and then we're going to start building we're going to begin we need to place a a smooth stone slab that is half a row off the ground in that position so the smooth stone slab is again it's four rows away from the actual platform on the left so um you might want to place like a black concrete and then a smooth stone slab in front of it anyway you place a smooth stone slab and then you place a black concrete behind it you then place two one two smooth stone slabs extending back black concrete smooth stone slab you add two rows of smooth stone slabs extending across like this to increase the width and then you basically just copy the first initial row so you copy all of the smooth stone and all of the black concretes that you had on that opposite side now we're going to place blast furnaces on the front two middle parts of the vehicle and we're going to place acacia trap doors flipping upwards in front of the blast furnaces I messed that up a little bit like this it looks like a grill uh, we're going to place acacia pressure plates on top it just makes it look al almost a little bit more muscly almost a bit more sporty um, we're going to place sideways facing smooth red sandstone stairs next to it again not easy to say fast uh, we're then going to place a border of smooth red sandstone extending all the way around the edge of the vehicle we'll also place smooth red sandstone behind the blast furnaces we will place uh, a row of black stained glass pane across the top front of the vehicle like this behind the blast furnaces. We'll then place smooth red sandstone blocks behind, black uh, stained glass pane behind that, another red sandstone in between like, like that, so basically extending the backwards, red sandstone, glass, red sandstone. Uh, we're going to place a row of red sandstone here in the back and then that will allow us to place a, a windshield. And then all we're going to do, just to make this simple, is we're just going to fill the top of the car in using some red sandstone slabs. And um, that'll be pretty much most of the car. It's just it's just a nice, chunky, simple, very, very easy car to make. Um, the only little details required would then be item frames, block of iron, red concrete, and some buttons. And that is going to give us some headlights on the front. Some brake lights on the back. Uh, and the buttons off all the wheels and it, it's as easy as that honestly it's very very simple stuff so we just want to have something which should look like that so basically the showroom it's only got two cars in it you could even add another one here by the way kind of like facing this way towards you and then you've kind of got like a it feels a bit crowded that way though but then you've kind of got like a representation of all of these cars 
Um, sometimes in showrooms as well, you may have like, I'll just use this as a representation. Sometimes in showrooms, you might have like a uh, some signs or a plaque telling you what the car is. So you might want to perhaps add, uh, you know, just like a little sign and then maybe like, um, that's a sports car and it costs this much. This is uh, the SUV. I got those mixed up, but you guys get the idea. And it costs this much money. Like you could have prices on them, 10 diamonds, 20, 100 diamonds. You guys get the idea. And uh, if you want, you could even add a little bit of red carpet. But these are this are this is subject to whether or not you even want that. You know, uh, you can have some red carpet laid out in here if you want to, and um, that kind of like intrigues people to come and have a look. Because um, I actually I think that uh, hopefully you guys agree. The, this part is actually kind of overwhelming. Like as you come in here, it's actually kind of like a really cool sort of little office chill out area. It's, it's really chilled out. So you know you might not immediately think to come in here. So um, this with a little bit of red carpet might uh, you know intrigue people a little bit more so that's kind of cool but the last car that i'm going to show you how to make ladies and gentlemen we're going to come outside here uh, now that we've kind of got a sporty car and SUV, I'm going to show you how to make like just your bog standard regular sort of street car um, incredibly easily repeatable the most uh, what should i say the most customizable out of all of the cars so um, here are all of the materials that we will need to make, again, the easiest car that you could possibly make. It comes in so many different colors. Any color of wall that you want, it basically comes in. So that's why it's pretty much the most customizable out of all of them. And then you can even make it out of like an, anything that's got a slab, just slabs, you can also make it out of as well. So that's what you need to make it. I'm gonna show you how to make that, and then we can really just populate the entire area with uh, actual cars as well. Well, so make sure that you got all that stuff. Make sure you've make sure that you've got you know the colours and stuff that you want. And um, once you have all the materials to make the simple car, we can get started. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we have all of the stuff we need to make our car. Mine's going to be purple. Again, just swap out the color of wool and the carpet, and then you're good to go for any color of car. Um, I'm going to be making it on this platform right here. And the way that we're going to start this off, uh, we're going to place a simple just a purple wall right in the front left hand corner of where the car has to be. We're going to place a grey concrete behind it, two purple walls behind that, grey concrete, purple wall. We'll add another row of purple wool inside, and then we will copy the opposite side. So we want to have a row in between both sets of wheels. The wheels as well are going to have buttons on the sides of them, like this. The front of the car wants to have headlights, so that's just going to be item frames and blocks of iron with a ladder in uh, in the front of it. Um, if you like, you can give the car uh, also um, brake lights as well. I guess that that's something that I actually missed, but so, you know, feel free to add that or don't. Um, they, they do make the car look a little bit better. Um, we are going to add two rows of purple carpet on the front of the car. And did I place that one there? It's hard to tell, yep. And one row of purple carpet on the back of the car. We want to place a purple wool on top of each one of the back wheels with a glass pane in between them. We want to extend the two walls forwards by placing two glass, join it together in the middle of the front, place a purple carpet in the center, and then simply place purple carpet on top of all of the glass like this, and just again on top of that middle part. So you'll place one purple and then another directly on top. And that is your car. So easy to make. You can probably, if you sped it, you could probably literally do it in like less than a minute. Uh, very, very simple car. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we've got three different kinds of cars, all right? Um, so you can populate your entire car dealership with those three cars. I'm actually just going to be doing this car here because it gives the greatest color range, but I'm going Going to be using this uh, I'm, I'm probably going to make at least at the very least 10 of them and i'm just going to fill up um most of this forecourt here and uh pretty much all of the entire back part so that's that's it ladies and gentlemen if you need to make those cars again um feel free to rewind the video make sure that you you know you know how to make them or use your previous uh cars and that'll allow you and like make them next to each other and then you'll be able to just repeat them just by sight but feel free to rewind the video if you have to i'm going to populate this area and then i'm going to show you what it'll look like because we have officially done ladies and gentlemen we have completed our car dealership so this ladies and gentlemen 
question is what your car dealership will look like once you have populated it with cars. As you can see, I've just stuck to the normal, regular, sort of everyday car um, that you can make out of all varieties of wool. Um, just because it's easy to make and it's really colourful, but obviously it, it would be a good idea to add a little bit of variety in here as well. But that's going to be completely up to you. I mean, I find it very satisfying to see all of these just all together at the back. There is something cool about seeing like a lot of the same, but all, just all in different colours. So that's, that's what this place will look like, guys. Uh, I... We're done. I do hope that you guys enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please do remember to subscribe to the channel and click the little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. And not only that, I am going to be showing you how to make a car transportation vehicle as well. But that is going to be a completely separate video too. You can find that in the card system, the description below and the top of the comment section. And not only that, I'll also link you the city builds place playlist where I make all sorts of stuff, like so much different stuff, so many different things. Um, again, card system description below at the top of the comment section. Uh, I show you how to make all different things for your city, uh, supermarkets, restaurants, post office, car dealerships, just it, it, the list goes on and on and on. Thank you so much for watching everybody. I love you all very much and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye!